deeply attacked by the president himself. The Brazilian press is plural, independent, and harshly critical of the government. Of this one, should I add, and of all the previous one. So one thing that I think contributes to this resilience of the Brazilian democracy is a free, independent, and fairly powerful press that we have in, in Brazil. The second factor I would add to my analysis of the resilience of the Brazilian democracy is that in the face of authoritarian rhetorical manifestations by the president or by people close to him, including invoking the times of the, the, the dictatorship, civil society reacted vigorously condemning the attacks on institutions and leading the authors of such attacks to take them back. So the reaction of the Brazilian society to what it perceived as threats, although they were just rhetorical threats, the reaction was very vigorous. And I think that showed the resilience of Brazilian democracy. Parties from the left to the right, the press, the universities, civil society, the reaction was prompt and very effective to the point that they had to take what they had said back. A third factor uh, is that an independent Supreme Court restrained the president's power defending federalism during the pandemic, important decisions, uh, preserving federalism, the power of the states and of the local governments, fundamental rights, freedom of expression, indigenous rights, and the court seeks to contain threats they are made to people and to institutions from this hierarchical, concerted, and funded groups that disseminate the so-called fake news or hate speech or disinformation uh, campaigns, which is a true danger for democracy all over the world. This digital militias that practice moral terrorism against opponents. Uh, so the reaction that democracy has been able to present to all attacks or to all moves that were felt as threats, I think clearly uh, show the resilience of the democratic system in Brazil. It, it's not that we should not be alert, but I think we are crossing these tough times, preserving the integrity of the main elements of uh, democracy. And as a conclusion, Brazilian constitutional democracy completes 32 years this year of 2020. This is an achievement that should not be taken for granted in a country like Brazil and in a continent like Latin America. And let me add, these were not trivial times, Dieter. We went through the impeachment of two presidents elected by popular vote we had times of hyperinflation, we had recession, we had extremely high unemployment, we had dramatic corruption scandals, we had center left and right wing governments and a president who defends the dictatorship and exalts torture. 
amid other vicissitudes. And no one has ever considered a solution other than respect for constitutional legality. That's something new in Brazilian history. That's something we really should uh, celebrate.